I'm going to share the PPT. And uh, of course, we'll not pay, uh, follow page by page, and it will be need based, and uh, we'll make it interactive. Uh, but that will be good for reference. And also, in the interim, we will share some website and uh, uh, some live data as well in order to explain the main concept. So starting with the PPT now. So stock market investment. Globally, it is picking up, uh, but uh, and, and not only picking up, it is uh, quite a bullish uh, time right now. All the global stock market have rallied in last uh, couple of months and has crossed the record level as well. But on the same time, in India, we are still seeing that almost three to four percent people are only investing. So we thought of uh, giving a session on this as well. And just to uh, clarify some of the fundamentals and the rules and uh, what are the tips and um, data we can access? What are the uh, uh, fundamental websites which can help us in knowing more about the stock? Of course, with that, we should also, uh, and it is for uh, everyone at large, we should also understand that despite all the tips and advice and techniques, the stock market itself is a risky place. Because no matter how clearly we make the investment decisions or we do all the different fundamental or technical analysis, the market risk remains there. And that's why uh, even the most successful um, investors of the different era, some of the Nobel, Nobel Prize winners even, they have made massive losses in the stock market, which does not mean it is always a scary place, but we need to understand that it could be um, subject to market risk. And so sometimes it can wipe out the entire capital and the investment as well. So with, with that, we, we can learn some of the uh, advices and the tips which can be followed more from the academic and learning perspective. Of course, um, Making the investment decision also depends on um, various uh, professional ad advisors and uh, your own risk appetite, your own decision making uh, are also involved in that. So th this, this presentation will be more for educational purpose. So moving ahead, when we talk about the shares in the share market, there are still some level of Secrecy and uh, traditionally it has been called like a uh, 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 like a uh, betting place. It is equivalent, considered equivalent to gambling. So yeah, still for many uh, it will remain so because ultimately you can't control the outcome. No matter how much you think and do the analysis, the return can be still random. There are many books written like that that, uh, that the stock market and the capital market is considered quite random. However, there are academic theories which consider that to a certain extent we can understand the market and accordingly we can try to invest. So what the stock market actually offers, apart from the equity and the shares that we know, it also provides us the option to trade other financial instruments such as mutual fund, SIP, IPO, bonds, which is typical debt floated by the corporates or the even governments, debenture, then comes the derivatives. Derivative is another financial instrument that derives its value from the underlying commodities. Typical commodity can be uh, oil or even some metals and currency. So though we are in the era of um, a lot of controversy around uh, cryptocurrency, but traditionally the currency ha which has been traded is uh, typical USD, pound, Australian dollar, euro, et cetera, uh, because many businesses try to protect and hedge their profit against the financial, uh, against the foreign exchange movements. So all, all these products and uh, financial instruments are traded in the market which we largely call stock market. So stock market does not mean it is only shares and the stocks, essentially. 
So uh, with me, I, I also have uh, another presenter for the session, uh, Nihar, uh, Nihar Baldev from London. Nihar, anything you want to add further? No, I think, uh, uh, you know, just to reiterate the fact that, um, you know, this is for educational purposes and, uh, you you know, when, when you are, um, you know, uh, trading in, in the stock market, your capital is always at risk. So we are, we are merely just going through the, going through this um, uh, for educational purposes. But, uh, but other than that, I think uh, we are good to, uh, good to go. Thanks, Nidish. Thank you. So how do we start trading? So properly, uh, popularly, DMAT and trading accounts are used to do the uh, buy and share, uh, sell your shares in the stock market. So you need to open the DMAT account using popular brokers or um, financial institutions that you interact with. So it will link one of your cash account to the DMAT account and you can do the trading you know, um, whenever you sell something, you can pass that money through the DMAT account to your uh, cash accounts in the bank, any typical bank, whether it is SBI or ICICI, you can link those bank accounts to the trading accounts. So this is how you can execute. There are plenty of brokers who offer their DMAT services, and also they give you the trading advices and the tips, whereby you need to still exercise your own judgment. So these are the, some of the logistics and uh, service provider to help you do the trading. So the stock exchanges in India are regulated by SEBI, Security and Exchange Board of India. And two key stock exchanges are NSE, National Stock Exchange and BSE that you jointly would have heard is called Sensex as well, which is the uh, weighted average um, index of 30 stocks. Mm -hmm. And those 30 stocks are um, time to time changing as well. But it, it the index, when we saw that um, Sensex has gone beyond 50 or 51, it is kind of a weighted average performance of those selected stocks. And that's why, your own stock performance can, can be different from what the stock market is performing, uh, especially the Sensex is performing, because uh, your stock might not be the true representative of those 30 stocks. So that is the meaning of Sensex and uh, NSC and BSC is linked to that. So before we start any investment, generally what people do, and again, some of the fundamentals, the steps that uh, uh, is popular, but everyone has their own way also to make the investments. Generally, we try to define our own risk appetite. For example, somebody having a spare cash of 1 million rupees, 10, 10 lakh rupees, and they have to make a judgment how long they can keep this engaged in the stock market or can they stay invested for next two years or three years? Would they need money before that? Or how much risk they can take? Can, can they uh, uh, expect to lose two, three lakhs out of that? Can What happens if they lose 50% of the uh, saving out of 1 million? Do they have that appetite? What is their long-term and short-term needs? What is their immediate requirement for the cash? To what extent they can afford to lose the money in the stock market? All those kind of analysis is required before someone venture into the stock market. Because as we said earlier, it is risky after all. No matter how much judgment we take, it is risky. Because there are various forces working in the market. We will talk about those. And a lot of complex decision making is also required. Yet, it is not to scale that um, uh, one cannot make money, but one cannot be extremely or too careful uh, to relax as well about its performance and cannot put all their savings without much awareness into the market. And that's where there are some strategies which are adopted by the investors, uh, such as uh, diversifications or understanding the each stock's beta, beta and um, performing some analysis on the financial statement. So 
before we do that, we need to understand our own requirement better. And also, do we have a other source of income? Somebody who is already making money or do not have any immediate financial liability, they can take the risk better. And that's where the risk appetite comes. However, someone who has saved their 25 lakhs uh, in last 15, 20 years cannot really afford to put all the money in the risky stocks or any such uh, um, speculative market whereby entire saving can be wiped out in, ca in case of the crash. So we have seen the history of uh, stock market going up quite drastically. We have seen that even in last um, 10 months, eight months, market has gone up by more than 100%. Sometimes it takes seven years or even longer than that. So it is, the variation is quite uh, unexpected. It is volatile as well in the nature. So define your life goal, learn about the financial assets. What are the different types of assets are trade in the market. Select the respective asset that you feel comfortable with. Because one of the uh, rule of thumb that should be followed is don't invest into something that you don't understand. For example, maybe you have been using uh, any any stock. And I, I, I don't, don't mean that um, whenever the, we are making reference to a particular stock, we are saying that that is good, good to buy. But imagine you, have, you know Dabur. We all know for a long time we have used the product. And we feel comfortable about the stock, that it is quite a good stock and has a good market as well. Now, if we think that, okay, based on the price earning ratios and various such indicators and its financial statement, it does not have much debt, maybe, we may or may not invest into this. But we at least understand what the company is, what is the product, its history, where it is trading, and its financial statement. To a certain extent, we are aware of its strengths and weaknesses. But imagine the other side. Somebody comes and tells me that, okay, uh, Nidhish, you need to uh, do a short selling on, on Dabur. And I heard, I might have heard of short selling and it, it sounds quite um, exciting word or maybe a technique because I might have heard that one of my friend made money after doing a short sell. And what? And if I decide to do the short selling, which means selling a stock without owning this or borrowing the stock just to sell and then try to buy it from the market and uh, return later on to the original investor, I might lose massive money because I might have decided to sell Dabar stock at the rate of 1000 rupees, hypothetical number, of course. And I might be thinking that the stock will crash because everyone is saying that it is bubble, it is inflated. So in case I plan to buy it back later on, when the price goes down at 800, I may make money. But on the same time, if I have sold it at 1000 and the stock market and stock, stocks go up, if the rally continues for Dabur, then I, I might have to buy at 1100, 1200 or even at 2000 which will be quite dangerous. And it's not a hypothetical situation. It has happened and it continues to happen. In last one month, one to two months, we have seen such situation globally. Many renowned and uh, professional investors lost uh, billions and billions of dollars on short selling. You might have heard the story of GameStop recently. That's what has happened. They did the short selling. They, so, they shorted the stock thinking that it has moved quite fast from $4 to $19. And in that expectation, investor investment managers who were quite experienced professional, they thought that, oh, it is going to crash from $19 to maybe 15 or five, etc. Then they will buy back and return to, the, to their uh, lender. They did not expect that it might go up from 19 to 100 or 300 or 500, but that's what, that's what happened. After they sold the stock after borrowing, the stock continued to go up and it 
did not go down as they were planning. Because of which, when the stock uh, went up, uh, uh, across the mark of hundred dollar, or even across three hundred dollar, the Mevlin Fund eventually lost five point five billion dollar, and I'm quoting this in dollar, five point five billion. So this is how there could be risk, but we need to be just educated. At least we need to know what is the meaning of the terminology, how it works. What are the risk and reward? How to assist them? So the objective of our discussion is just to make you aware to certain extent in this class, uh, and at least you may start the journey and do your own research after this. So fulfill your goal. Start investing regularly. Uh, that these these two are also important because when people make the regular saving and it is just sitting in the bank, it might not give. The required return, but on the same time, a regular investment in the safe stocks or well diversified portfolio can still make a good money. Because what happens? Some stocks may go up or down in the short term, but if the stock or the company is um, well established, has good corporate governance, it will continue to perform above average than than a speculative stock. But in the long term, because normally a good company do not perform very well in the short term. You might not expect even some uh, well-established companies like um, Tata or Reliance to give you massive return in the next three months. In fact, it can make some losses as well. But if you take a view of two, three, or five years, then definitely it will start to give you a good average or above average return, and that's where. It is important that regular small investments are made in the market. Next one, some definitions, because we often hear, even in the newspaper, we see large cap, mid cap, small cap stocks. So here are some in introduction to that. These companies are well established, as I referred to earlier, such as TCS, Reliance. They have massive capital. High liquidity, and um, they are called large cap stock, blue chip companies. So that is the large ones. And then we can understand first before going to mid cap. Let's see what are the small caps first. Those are startup or the company which has just gone into IPO might be sharing the stock at two or three dollar or two or twenty thirty rupees right now. The volume might not be very uh, very big. The company might not be very old. They are they might still be struggling. So they are the small cap stocks. So now between these starts up and the newborn IPO companies and TCS Infosys Reliance, there are some stocks which are average, which are not at either of the extreme ends. They are called mid cap stocks. So these are some in standard terminologies used often, but it doesn't mean large caps are risk-free or small caps are only risky. They might have their own um, idiosyncrasies. They might have their own features and risk also. So a company raises money through the IPO first. And they when they go into the stock market, they raise the money actually through IPO, and then it start to sell in the secondary market. That's where we call it primary and Secondary markets. Nia, yeah, anything you want to add or any question? Anyone? All good, Nidish. Okay. Some other key financial instruments. Shares and equity. We have discussed. Mutual funds. So I, I think many of you would have heard or invested as well. So mutual funds um, can be invested in small uh, values frequently. They are available for buy and sell on daily basis. They offer high amount of liquidity, and that's where many banks and the financial advisors suggest people to invest into mutual funds. Of course, they are also subject to market risk, 
no doubt, but they offer a good diversified values. You don't have to assess the each equity and stock on a regular basis. And um, it is managed by, again, professional traders and the investment managers. But th they represent a pool of different stocks and the bonds rather than just one stock. And that's why it offers you some sort of uh, hedge to risk. And they diversify the portfolio so that if one or two company goes down, your entire portfolio or the value of investment does not disappear. Right. So that's the benefit of mutual funds. Of course, its performance will also not be as lucrative as it will be for particular stock because always remember risk and reward goes hand in hand. Since they are kind of much more hedged, less risky because of the diversification, they also offer you average return, not a very excessive return. But it, it, it is encouraged to invest because uh, it will still offer you some return on your idle money sitting in the bank account. Of course, bank also offer the interest around 6 to 7% every year, but still often it is considered idle money because the market can still offer you much more return and rewards. Because if you consider the stock market, and of course, a uh, couple of stocks, one selected stock can be risky, but the entire stock market on average goes become double or uh, goes up by 100%. Uh, in six to seven years, safe to say, right? So in six to seven years, we have seen the tendency, the market almost doubles. If anything doubles in seven years, right? What is the annual return? It's almost 10.2%. So let me tell you a rule, a, rule, uh, a rule here to make such calculation fast. So this is called rule of 72. Okay. If you think somebody has promised you that the stock with all the guarantee or the portfolio return with all the guarantee will be double in nine years, and you are scratching the head that, okay, what is the compounded rate basically on every year? How much rate is, uh, rate of return is for, uh, um, for the year? You just need to divide 72 by the number of years and you'll get the percentage annual rate of return or effective rate of return. So if you want to get the rate of return on annual basis, just divide the number of years, sorry, the 72 by the number of years, or if you want to calculate the number of year it will take to double your money, then divide 72 by the interest rate. And you'll get an approximate. Of course, uh, it, will, it will not be as precise as Excel calculation or calculator, but it will be a very good ballpoint number for you to estimate how the stock or the market is performing. So back to our story. If the market is double in say eight years or seven years. So if it's double in seven years, then your return uh, 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 average annual return is 10.2% approximately. With reference to this, the banks are offering say 6%. Then still the stock market is offering you additional 4% return. And that is not one or two particular stock, it's entire market. That means it is kind of well diversified and well balanced. It's not a very risky return as well. Of course, it is not risk-free, but it decent risk. Okay, so that's why mutual funds are often encouraged for investment. Next is bond. Bond is a fixed income. Why it is called fixed income? Because it will give you a fixed return, fixed coupon, every six months or one year your investment is not subject to the company's performance that's the difference between the bond and equity you are promised a fixed return every six months or one year you are also promised the entire capital to be returned to you at the end of the maturity it could be five years seven eight ten years so maturity or the duration is defined for the bonds unless there are some feature to roll over or turn the bonds into equity or the stock, generally it is defined and you'll get the capital back. Coupon will be coming to you at regular basis. So the return on the bond is guaranteed, unlike equity. On the stock or equity, you might not get that kind of uh, regular return or dividend at regular period, 
but for bonds you have a short return but of course your uh, return will not go up in case company makes massive profit because that profit goes primarily to shareholders now next is derivative we have already dis discussed briefly derivatives derive its value from the underlying so for example someone can buy an option so option generally gives you certain rights so suppose that someone buys call option which means the buyer who pays a commission to the seller will have the right to buy the stock at a given price which means if i buy today call option from my broker maybe it it could be sher khan it could be um any other whatever you you know and prefer so they can sell you a call option which means you can buy um maybe nowadays bitcoin is popular suppose someone gets an option to buy bitcoin in 2 years for 100000 and bitcoin becomes 10 lakh option that means you have a right to buy bitcoin at a much much cheaper price you have just a right you, you no one is forcing you so it's not not an obligation so you have the right similarly there are futures and forwards in the future and forward you have the right as well as obligation so you have to buy in that case or sell right so there are derivatives which gets really its value from the underlying because in this case the call option i was talking about if the bitcoins goes up my call option becomes very very valuable otherwise it does not have its own value it has the value only when the underlying changes in your favor and it doesn't mean always it has to go up because if i have the opposite kind of derivative like a right to sell in that case if the bitcoins goes down still you make money so it depending on what type of derivative you are buying or you are getting into and also what type of transaction it is you can make money or you can also use this to hedge your profit so that is the derivative any question so here are a couple of definition maybe we can uh, safely summarize this like uh, stocks are also of uh, two types common and the preferred preferred ones are very similar to the fixed income because they will give you a promised return a fixed return and of course like a fixed income it does not have the voting rights so that is the dif difference between the co preferred and common common will have will give you all sort of voting rights legal rights in case of uh, any um, unfair company affairs it will entitle you for equity when the company makes massive profits but it will be also subject to risk so preferred preferred stock is very similar to fixed income and uh, bit much um, uh, a lot different from the common stock it also represent the ownership in the corp in the company in which you buy the stock so the street name is the, a term popularly referred to the brokerage accounts your your broker account that you have and that's why many people who does the reconciliation they reconcile against the street companies in order to protect the shareholders have the board of directors who are supposed to act in the interest of the shareholders because if you make the investment your natural question would be that who is going to take care of that one might have invested 2 million 3 million uh, rupees or, do or dollar and of course we are not involved in the day to day management then who is going to take care of those investment what if the company management sell all the asset and disappear and sitting somewhere on the beach you, you can see the one behind me in the background somebody sitting there after selling all the asset of the company and it could be we you me 
who had invested money and capital into that company and the management can just disappear one day selling all the assets right you might have a, gen a very reasonable fear so for that there are uh, provisions in companies act there are co corporate governance codes which lays down the standard and policy in the and it defines the fiduciary or legal responsibilities of the board of directors and the head of the board of directors is called chairman or chairperson they are supposed to protect your interest rights and inform you communicate to you that what is happening in the company and that's why you often hear that there are um, a board has decided or board has informed the chairman has given the update to the shareholders annual general meet meetings are accompanied uh, actually jointly addressed by the ceos and the chairman of course the companies are expected to have chairman and the ceo as a two different person two separate person sometimes it does not happen there we need to be careful we need to be more watchful about what are the corporate governance codes being followed in a particular company generally again as um, indication a company which has very clean corporate governance record very good corporate governance practices they are safer as compared to the one which does not care about the corporate governance and the independence of the board where the functionality of the board is not very effective then there are expectedly higher risk in those companies Nihar, any anything you want to add please stop no i think uh, you've covered it uh, pretty much uh, everything there so the, the two separate functions, the, as you say, the, the CEO and the, and the chairman. So it's often good practice and the best practice. So so I guess when, when you are looking to, to pick any stocks, it's important that um, it has, um, uh, you know, that the corporate governments and the structure and looking at the whole thing gives a better idea of, of what you're picking as a stock to invest in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Then, as you know, the uh, stocks on annual basis, they offer dividends if they make a profit and consistent with their past pattern. And this is where we'll see some of the uh, some of the uh, statistics in relation to the stocks. And we'll uh, also show you the website which offers this data and details. So dividends is also one of the indicator as to how the company is performing. But again, it, it is no guarantee that they will continue to give the dividends as well. Because it really depends on the profitability and the profit made. Generally, a company which is taking the loan or uh, depending on the borrowing to pay the dividend, that could be even much more disastrous because they are paying today to keep the sh shareholders happy or the market uh, floated. But in the future, there could be deeper problems. Dividend payout ratios. This is div uh, your dividend rupee value divided by the price of the shares. That is the dividend, uh, or uh, in, in fact, the dividend divided by the profit made on annual basis, profit after the tax. So if you do divide the dividend by the profit made after the tax, it will give you a payout ratios. So what does that mean? Let me just uh, write down the formula. So if a company suppose makes a profit of $200 million and there are 20 million shares plus they have a project they have some upcoming projects which requires 80 million of investment now the company has to decide like do they need to distribute all of this 200 or this 80 million of course if they want to keep the pattern of returning everything to the shareholders they will distribute everything and for the project they will borrow but the best practice also suggests that they need to first save for this project 
and distribute only the remaining amount, which means 200 minus 80 divided by 20 million, which is $6 per share. They will return this much. So what is this $6 per share payout ratio? So on average, it seems they have made $10 per share. Out of $10, they are returning to their shareholders $6 only. So the payout ratio is 60%. This will be a good comparison and estimate. And you can calculate that based on the past data. And then you can develop an estimate as to what is the practice of the company, how much they return to the shareholders normally. Because once they return in last two, three years, 60%, there is a signaling effect as well in the market when it comes to different distribution. Companies generally try to stick to those percentage of the distribution. Because if they don't, it also gives a wrong, wrong signal in the market that there is something wrong or maybe company is uh, striving uh, to keep some cash or there's a lack of liquidity or banks are not lending to, to them. So that's why they don't want to go into any such controversy. They try to maintain the same pattern with reference to the um, past couple of years so that there's no negative press about the performance of the company. So of course, numerically, when we buy something at $100 and it becomes 120, there is a capital gain of $20. So that is called capital gain. In terms of percentage, it is 20% capital gain. If it rises from 100 to 120. Some other terminologies that is popular for stock investment are growth stock. So the growth, growth stock are the ones which are, of course, uh, uh, the one that, that is not like a blue chip company, but is ex expected to grow at a faster pace. They might have got good investment or they are in a uh, great market. Some, uh, just like right now, there is a, a lot of buzz around the technology or edtech or fintech, etc. If a company has gone into this and have got good investment, they'll become a growth stock because they are expected to really outperform the market in the short term even. Then income stock, something that provides a good dividend because dividend is the income to the shareholders on annual basis. So they are income stock. Speculative stocks, quite interesting one. Would like to emphasize here that speculative stocks are the ones which might not have a great record of the performance or the history, but they are, they are expected to go um, uh, grow very fast based on certain um, events in the market or the in, in the economy. Cyclical stocks, some uh, those stocks which are based on the cycles of the economy. And that could be is the commodity based company and their stocks companies which are trading in oil, airlines, auto makers, car makers. They are quite cyclical in nature because they go up and down based on the status of the stage of the economy. If economy is doing well, they are at the peak. Otherwise, they start to slide. You can imagine in case of recession, when people are uh, losing employment, the business is very bad. You will see that automakers and the car uh, uh, manufacturing business is not doing well. People are not buying enough car. The stock will start to slide down and will again start to pick up as the economy gets better. So those are the cyclical stock. And we need to understand this kind of uh, differences and variations from one stock to another stock, one company to another one, so that we at least know their nature and what kind of risk we are going into. If the economy is picking up and you are investing into a steel or car maker, you might expect to get good return. Yeah. But on the same time, when the, uh, there's a news that economy is entering into recession or bad time is coming and you just go into a airlines industry or car maker, you are taking excess, uh, quite apparent risk. Of course, risk is there everywhere, 
but some risk are quite apparent quite predictable that you are entering into a known risk zone so that's why it is important to understand the differences between all these different types of stocks and uh, accordingly make the de decision of course if you are ready to take the risk those kind of risk is good good it's okay if you are ready you have that um, extra security safety income you are ready to pocket those risk it is an informed decision so our objective is to just explain what kind of stocks are there what are the their definitions so that you can take your own call in a more informed way next one is a defensive stocks so defensive stocks does not mean it relates to defense forces or the defense companies they are those which are kind of very stable no matter what happens to the world they will be still stable of course such stocks are not also uh, uh, kind of uh, giving excessive return but they are very moderately risky and they provide a moderate performance as well what would be the example of such stocks anyone you can consider the the health Pharma pharmaceutical company who are selling life saving drugs and the medicines because they are kind of immune to the cycle of the economy they are not luxury stocks they are, and their performance will be still stable so the defensive stocks can be safe for those who do not want to take massive risk mid cap stocks we have discussed mid cap and small cap earlier so as part of the different uh, stock variations mid cap is the just in in between the small cap and large ones uh, it is not very very successful blue chip company like reliance or tcs but they are not also small startups so they have already made their name uh, they are growing quite well and they have big investors as well but a lot more to come in the future par value as the name suggest when the stocks are in any financial instruments are sold at the book value they are called at par then the question comes what is the book value so generally in the world of accounting and finance the book value the book is referred as the accounting book and records the balance sheet etc so hello yes yeah. on the level of rice tariff was with the parallel all right so the book value so far we have talked about the market value of all the stocks so if reliance is selling at say 3000 or in infosys at um i don't recall it could be 2 to 3000 again they are uh, these are all the market price these are the price that market thinks they should be valued at but it doesn't mean that their book value is the same so that will de be dependent on the entire asset of that company minus the liability of the company so whatever the net asset is left divided by the number of shares that is their book value per shares and why it is important what is the reason to look at this often when we will go to the websites like money control or ready for money i will give you the list uh, or uh, we'll talk about those separately as well but those website will talk about that what is the price divided by book value ratio of this company so suppose a price by book value ratio is 8 for any hypothetical stock say in forces for example that means the per share value in the market is just eight times as compared to what is the book value of the company so maybe the case that let me just uh, add a ppt to explain this infosys balance sheet could be like this of course everything is in billion 
rupees the company right so balance sheet could look like could look like maybe 30000 assets liability is something like say 12000 net asset is 18000 billion rupees total shares so maybe 2000 thousand let's say so divided by 2000 it is 9 rupees per share hypothetically so that is my book value per share but on the same time in the market it is trading at 2000 so my price by book value here is 2000 by 9 so something like 200 or 220 right which is saying that the price of this stock has inflated to the tune of 220x if you if you go and sell the stock asset and um, you try to just extinguish all the asset and liability you might just get one rupee for 220 rupees that you have paid for the same stock that's the simple meaning of the price book value multiple but when it comes to the book value per stock here it is nine rupees per share is your book value per stock because what is your asset minus liability divided by the number of shares is your book value if now how do we make a judgment whether it is good or bad that's the next question if this 220 is good or bad how do we decide because you might have seen historically many stock or portfolio or even mutual fund that we consider uh, quite popular amongst masses that nowadays they also in, invest into such a stock like tcs infosys reliance and their price book value will be maybe um, 20 50 or 100 times right the book value their price could be very very high as compared to the book value still people are investing into this so how would we decide whether it is worth or not of course I would repeat, I, I'm not suggesting, okay, decide on the basis of this or not decide on the basis of this. It's your call, it's your risk appetite and uh, your overall decisions. But just to understand it mathematically and purely from academic perspective, that how still we can understand that what does that mean? Because if I just say that, okay, a stock is 20 times the book value, or someone else say that, okay, it is 50 times of the book value. Still, this stock might perform 50% over five years. And this stock might just perform 20% over five years. Or another one, which is kind of much better in terms of this ratio. Price book value is uh, 15. Still, this would have performed minus 5% over five years. So is this the sole indicator of performance? No. You have to use all these ratios in conjunction with the balance sheet, the cash flow, the PNL, the insolvency or solvency ratios, um, our earnings, market potential, so on and forth. We'll talk about that in more detail. But no one ratio can give you kind of one size fits all comfort. Okay, It will not guarantee that okay things are going to be very rosy and it will be fantastic return. Just based on the one ratio, we can't, you can't decide. So what to do? Yeah. How do you make a measurement? Yeah. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, Nadesh, no, that, that's right. So it's often also driven by the market sentiment, um, as you say. So this book value, power value is one of the things, as you say, you can look at. Um, but you, you're you going to look at the, the sector, the, the what sector that the company is in, and then various different ratios. Uh, but as you say, this is to, to show how you know how the power value and the book value works but this is definitely not by any means the you know uh, something that you can decide what to buy something on for example yeah absolutely no final indicator it has so another another kind of uh, tips that we can give just to give you some kind of idea again that you can compare the PBV of 
company A, which could be a blue chip company or a mid size as well. You can compare the PBV ratio of this company with industry. Generally, what happens if you look at the IT company? Because I was taking the example of Infosys. Generally, we know IT company have really inflated and gone big in the last 20 years. And I'm not saying that they are not performing good. They are just big enough now. And they have consistently grown from one level to another level. And they are not even maybe risky. Still, you'll see that price book value is quite high. So maybe um, in Infosys, if I take the example, their price book value could be 40. And it seems quite high, generally speaking. But on the relative scale, if you look at the industry price book value, the industry price book value is also 32. And then you will realize that it is quite similar. It's not like tremendously high or complete out of the world, uh, especially given the fact that Infosys is a very reputed, well-governed and successful company in India. Uh, hence, having a 40 price book value is quite reasonable because people will be buying this stock quite a lot and high confidence. That's why it has been Keep, uh, it has been keep growing in last couple of years, but since the average industry PBB is also 32, so it is okay. It is not a red flag at least. So this is how you can use some other numbers and the stats in order to make the judgment. Of course, the judgment is yours, but there are some assisting tools available. Moving on. So company stock as an inflation hedge. So Stocks also provide a good hedge. We all know we are in the era of inflationary cycle. Of course, in last uh, couple of years, um, inflation has uh, still calmed down. It used to be quite, uh, quite even higher, but um, stocks normally provides us the hedge against the inflation because the rupee or our cash saving sitting in bank, it is going down by four to 5% in value every year with inflation. Even if you get 6% of the interest, still the return is very nominal because the real return is only 6 minus 5%. Because your worth of well, uh, money or the rupees saved in the bank account is going down year by year by the rate of the inflation. But if you have invested in any commodity or any equity, because they, they are trading the market and they are, uh, they are buying and selling the products, and their product value is also going up. So they kind of give you a inflation adjusted return or maybe the return which will at least compensate with, uh, compensate you for the inflation unless something is drastically wrong in the company. So it provides some hedge against the inflation. So now we are going into a little bit more in details of the market. So. We also hear the market is bearish or bullish. I also referred to this a uh, few minutes ago that when the market is bullish, which is a bull, and it's not that market is always like a bull that it does not see what is there or it just go after the red color. I, I think it is also a myth that bulls go after the red color. But anyway, so when it is bullish, means people have high level of confidence. People are excited. They, they are looking forward to buy the stocks in the market and bet in the market. So that is bullish. Contrary to that, when it becomes a bear, it becomes bearish. That means people are depressed from the market performance, with the market performance. They do not see market going up anytime sooner. They don't want to put their money at risk. They don't want to invest. They don't want to bet on the market right now. Uh, they don't have the confidence in the market. And they, uh, that's why it is bearish. And remember, all what I'm saying, all what we are saying is always relative on the scale. And it is also um, a matter of emotions. Markets are driven a lot by emotion than the fact. And this is where basically we see that despite no matter how much logic we try to use, all the price, book value, price 
earning ratio, dupe on ratio, uh, different uh, five uh, set of ratio analysis, everything that we can do. Despite the fact that sometimes companies uh, even hire Nobel Prize winners of the economics in the finance, the best minds in the finance, in order to really make good money in the market, still they lose money. You know why? Because often people think that the stock market, etc., can perform very well if a good analysis is conducted. But the challenge is the fact that market is driven by a lot of emotions, it becomes very volatile and sporadic, hard to predict because you can't predict people's emotions and the fears. And that, that's why we find that logic sometimes is widened when it comes to the investment. Here you see the bear. Bear and bull both are fighting sometimes. Because in the same market, you might find the signs of the bear and the bull both. Selling short, we have discussed about the short selling and its risk as well. Now, some basic characteristics of the equity capital and their types. We have we have gone through the growth stock, income, and speculative, speculative stocks. Uh, we can safely skip that one. Now, a couple of websites. And again, it's not uh, exclusive or complete list of the website that you can refer for the financial news, um, but it can still give you some of the basic data. Okay. So for example, moneycontrol.com or google.com finance, finance Yahoo, rate of money, et cetera. These are the website that some or many investors often use to generate those numbers like price earning we talked about, price book value, the financial statement, who, what are the uh, foreign investment, investors doing into that stock? Are they selling or buying these stocks? This kind of news, what is the uh, strengths and weaknesses? So some kind of uh, sort analysis of the company and the stock. Those are performed on these websites and you can use them to understand. Because one thing, and I would repeatedly say that it has been a very, very good advice from one of the uh, one of the most uh, well-known investor in the world, Warren Buffett. Right? He says that don't invest into a stock that and the company you don't understand well, or the business of the company if you don't understand well, don't just blindly invest based on certain ratios only, because ratios can change any time. A slight change in the numerator or denominator can tweak the ratio. If you don't understand the business, what the company is doing, what is their strengths, who are the investors, how the macroeconomic conditions can affect the business, then it is not worth taking the risk because ultimately you are not aware what you are going to face. It's just like you're going to a sea beach without knowing how fast the temperature can change. Or is there any um, uh, uh, chances of tides? If you just think that it's beautiful and let's go, it could be dangerous. You need to understand where you are going, what you're entering into. So we'll explore some of these websites also in a in few minutes. So some website to read the financial news. The earlier ones were for the stock related information, the pattern, the volume, the liquidity of the stock. And the next website, list of the website is more for the financial news. And question rises that why we need to do all this? Can't we just look at one or two ratios and make the investment decisions? Why to look into so many different stock, a, a different website, the ratios or the news, um, this kind of a big headache. But it has a, its own rationale. Because generally, uh, again, academically speaking, because these things are no guarantee of the return of the stock and your capital gain is still be at the risk. I, I would repeat in that sense. Uh, so some of the ways that um, academically or finance theory suggests that you can um, try to use before making the decision is top-down and bottom-up approach. 
So generally, investors are advised or people are advised to use these approaches when you make the financial decision or any investment decisions in the uh, market. So what is the top down and bottom up approach? That's a question. But those questions can be answered with help of news, financial data, what is happening in the world. Because if we don't have these raw information, the news about the company, its project, what new license it has got, where it has um, entered into to the market and what new law is going to impact a company, uh, you cannot re really make a reliable decision about the stock. All these informations are needed for making any top down or bottom up decisions or to use these models. So let me explain what these two approaches are. Top down analysis and bottom up. So how do we perform a top down analysis? I'll open one news website and one stock related website, both. So I'm going to open one money control and economic times, both to explain these two models or these two approaches actually. Are you able to see the web page here? Yeah. Great. So this is the money control website I was referring to. Because we, no matter how we make the decision, everyone has their own life preference, choice, money requirement, risk appetite, but the purpose of this session is to just give you the tools so that you can make your decisions or at least have some tools rather than thinking where to get the data or where, where to find the information. So here we can see money control. We can search any stock here, maybe Indus Bank. And again, I'm just using this example. I'm not suggesting to buy or sell these stocks. So you see here. 1050, 1065.90, that's the current price. And 52 weeks range versus one day range is given here. So generally, many people also take this approach. They will see, okay, so the current price is 1065, whereas it has moved from 235 to 1203 in last 52 weeks. So one year range is quite wide from 235 to 1203. In one way, people can also think, and I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, that if it has gone up to this level, then it has that tendency, right? And that's what the technical analysts believe. So there is another uh, two more approaches actually. Fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Technical analysts think that the stock will follow a pattern. What is it has achieved in last 12 months might be repeated in the coming years as well. Right. So they will think that, okay, if it has gone to a certain level in the past, it might repeat when the good time comes. So again, whether that approach is right or not, works or not, is a different thing. But can we get the data? Yes, we can get the data from these places to make your decisions. So 1203 is the highest range of 52 weeks, whereas on daily basis, on that particular day, on Friday, it has traded between 1,027 to 1,074. So that, that also shows the volatility and the fluctuations. You can use the graph as well on daily basis. So th this reflects the daily movement of that stock. We talked about the SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats earlier as well. So strengths are eight of this stock, weaknesses seven, you can go into the uh, into the details by clicking here. Opportunities eight, and there is no threat as such. And this is 
this could be one of the reasons why the why people are very very bullish about this stock. It has gone, I think, in last uh, uh, six weeks, it, it has gone up by almost twenty five percent. It has been one of the best performer banking stock. So this kind of analysis can be done based on the data available here. How you do? Maybe your call, your own instinct, your own analysis can be completely different from others. But data is there at least. We don't have to now uh, go, go random at many places and trying to guess what is happening. At least data is there for your analysis. Now, th this is the volume of the stock ex exchanged um, on a regular basis. It's not a daily, by the way. Um, beta, this is reflecting your risk. Beta is the risk of the equity or the stock. So that's what it is reflecting here. 1.69 is the beta of the stock. Next one that we need to look at is price earning ratio. You remember we talked about the price book value earlier. And now here we have price earning ratio. What does that mean? The price earning. That says how much, what is the multiple of the earning the share is trading at. So if the earning per share is $10 or 10 rupees, the share price is in the sector 400. So 40 is equal to price divided by the earning of the stock in a year. And the sector PE means it is a sec uh, sector's price earning. Remember we talked about that we need to compare the ratios for the sector as well. So if Infosys price book value was say um, 40 and the sector price book value is 32, then we can estimate whether it is reasonable or too high or too low. So comparing the sector PE versus the company's own PE. So TTM PE, this is company's PE. So company's price earning here in this case, we think is lower than sector PE, which means company's price is actually uh, has gone up to the lighter uh, to the lesser degree as compared to the sector. Sector's average stock has gone up at a faster pace as compared to this company's stock. Right. And with reference to what? With reference to earning. If the company's earning has gone, uh, sorry, the price has gone 35 times of the annual earning, then the entire sector's price, the banking sector's price has gone up 40 times of the earning, which means the price of this share is, though recently gone up, but it still uh, has been inflated less than the average stock in the industry. In a way, we can also infer that it means it has potential to go up further because it is still lesser than the average uh, stock in the market, right? So that this, these are the interpretation of these ratios. Book value per share. What is the book value we talked about earlier? This is where we get the data. Book value per share, 460 spot nine. And what is the price book value? How much price has been inflated? What is the multiple of the price book? 2.31, which means if my book value is $100, the price has gone up to $231 because the price is 2.31 times the book value. So this also gives me some sort of indication of what is the bubble, how much inflated the stock is. Because if the stock has completely gone, uh, has, trust, has, has been divorced from the book value, it is dangerous. Because ultimately, it, it reflects a massive bubble to just to burst in the future. So, Price book value, sector PE, company's own price earning ratios, these are good indicators to analyze as well. Here, we have charts. We can select what time period we want to analyze. We want to see the stock movement from for three months basis, for last three months, or we want to go further into details. I want to see how it has rallied in the last six months. 
you can see it has gone from 516 to 1065 in last six months, How about five years. Now that even gives you a better idea. On 7th August 18, it was 1979 or 1980, almost 75% above the current price. So this is the highest peak it has touched. Some one and a half years, or sorry, um, uh, some two and a half years. No, it, it is July 18. So yeah, uh, some one and a half years ago, it was 80% higher. It has gone down in March 20. Actually, the same week when the pandemic was uh, lockdown was declared in India, it touched the bottom. And we know the reasons. 315. Now it is 1065. So in around 10 months, it is 280% up. But it has a potential, it seems, if we look at the history. So these are some of the analytics that I can think, be um, performed. Just hmm. on, the, on this point, Nidish, I think yeah. uh, this, this reminds me of the, the stock market crash in uh, 1929. I think it was, um, it was um, led by a global depression that we might have heard. And it's also called, um, many people refer to it as um, Black Thursday or Black Tuesday. I think uh, this is when everything was uh, booming back in 1929. Um, and the position of the USA was flourishing, as we all might recollect, as, a, as, it, might, as it emerged as the superpower after the World War I. And it was, it was known as the Roaring Twenties. Um, and then came the, you know, I think it was 24th of October, 1929, when the whole, uh, um, the crash was first identified and it went on up until um, from Thursday up until Tuesday. So, so this kind of uh, pandemic, the way it dropped in March, it was quite similar to what, you know, the famous event that happened, uh, the crash that happened, uh, which is also, as I say, known as Black Thursday. And it actually went on for two decades. In this case, it was only for uh, for a short length of time, but uh, back then it went on for um, for two decades. And obviously, all the different economies were interconnected as well back then. So um, uh, so all countries were uh, were affected. So I thought I would just add that. Yeah, ex excellent uh, points, Nihar. Because in, indeed, um, those were reminiscent of the idea that the market is so risky and in one go how much uh, volatility can impact us now i think just just to and, and it, i mean mm -hmm. as i say this was this was just a small uh, you know the, the recovery here was much quicker but back then it was it was um, you know it was um, it was it went on as i say for two two decades and i think it went on uh, so bad that I think uh, that's when around 1929 this happened and 1932 yeah. the state of Germany was so bad that's when Hitler actually uh, came to rise as well um, because obviously when the economies are doing so bad uh, and all the panic is going on and all the countries are in dire straits and that's when obviously the rise of Hitler um, Hitler happened but I, it was just an interesting in you know something something interesting that our audience might find. Yeah, absolutely. Those those were the era when um, when the market crashes people become more emotional, and protectionism also becomes higher, and uh, those market volatility calls, causes emotional volatility, and more and more uh, panic is created. Some people take the advantage and. Um, other problems also start as we saw um, World War II coming after this crash. Yeah, precisely. Oh. 1939, mm. and I think exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that's that's exactly it. Um, but I think it's also interesting to note that um, you know I think it was about 18 centuries when the USA got first uh, systematic stock exchange. I think it was in Philadelphia. But then obviously the most popular stock exchange, as, as we know, is. Uh, um, New York Stock Exchange, um, you know, which is on, on Wall Street. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I guess uh, you know all all these things you know is interesting. So even when things are at you know at at, at real boom, a crash can happen. But obviously, you know that's uh, these kind of events are sort of something that we can all learn from, and that's why it's important to 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 state that you know your capital is always at risk when you're involved in these kind of things. Um, I think. Uh, I think also another interesting thing you might, uh, our audience might find is I think we had, um, you know, at the time, obviously, when the New York Stock Exchange and, and everything was was established, I think uh, India was on the in the colonial rule. But I think, um, I think the, fir the, the first kind of stock exchange came when there was trading happened under the banyan tree. Uh, in 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 Mumbai, but and the Sensex, Sensex was was born. But I think the National Stock Exchange, uh, which is the most uh, sort of provides a lot of safeguards, happened in 1994, which is what gave us the most systematic sort of national stock exchange in India, where it's much more regulated. So yes, it is regulated, and there's a lot of safeguards in place. But uh, but as we say, we are not financial advisors, so you need to consult. You know, we, so that's why we are, we are merely just uh, advising. We are not advising on what stocks to get, but but instead we are just going through the the fundamentals of what the different ratios are. Absolutely, I agree. And um, th thanks for sharing those um, history behind behind the evolution of the stock exchanges. What happened? Uh, prior to the World War II and uh, the De Great Depression, uh, they are very good um, reminders of from the history that what we need to be careful of. But still, it doesn't mean that we need to be just um, kind of discouraged from taking the informed decision. Definitely yes, we not. We need to strike the balance. Yeah. And uh, we need to strike the balance, as you said. But yet, um, yeah. if we don't consider all the fi facts and the tips and the tools, mm -hmm. Um, we don't take the advice from the professional um, uh, broker, etc. Uh, basically, then the risk can be quite pervasive, quite large. Uh, but here we are just trying to share some of the information and how ratios are calculated. Yeah, yeah. And what does it absolutely. Mean? So for anyone who wants to um, get involved in the stock market, we, you know, we, I guess we, we're just highlighting the different ratios and the different data they need to look at and make an informed decision rather than just, you know, uh, get into it without, you know, without knowing what they're looking at. As you say, Warren Buffett's famous quote is that you need to understand, right, um, what you're investing in. So even though it's it sound it might sound very simple, but luckily we are living in the era where all this data and all this information is available. Um, um, so it's always good to know, you know, uh, your price, you know, your price earning ratios, and as you say, your par value, your book value, the what sector, um, etc. So and you touched on a few uh, interesting points. So even when you look at those points, you will get a fair idea of where a certain company is yeah 100 so on money control website again we can find some other very um, useful informations some of the uh, um, key data that we can we can look at is price bullish momentum above short medium and long term moving averages financials so th this is called Petrosky score, which reflects how strong is the financial of the company. And of course, um, it, this is also not end of the world, like um, it may not be 100% foolproof because it just tried to generate some statistics based on the financial statement of the company. Uh, so many people use this, but we can use our own judgment. We can look at the financial statement, balance sheet, the profit and loss, and we can analyze how much debt is there. It's quite important to understand the debt of the company because that can turn into interest expense. Interest expense becomes a very fixed in, uh, expense on a regular basis. If the debt goes out of hand, if it is spiraled too big, eventually it can drag the company into serious trouble. Banks can pursue the court cases to bring the company in the court. They can force the liquidation. They can um, stop further finance and the credit, and um, it can damage the reputation of the company in the market. 
So it could be quite uh, informative uh, to look at the financial statement of the company as well, rather than just relying on some data like this. But yeah, it can also be used uh, once you become comfortable. Uh, now, industry comparison. Here we look at how the different stats and the numbers of this company performs uh, against the industry average, industry comparison. And here are some news from the shareholders buy and sell. Promoters have decreased holding from 14.68 to 14.67, very small reduction. Mutual fund has also reduced quite significantly for this, uh, from this stock. Number of MFA scheme has reduced, but on the same time, some have increased their investment as well foreign institutional investors, et cetera. So a roundup of all the informations are given there. Uh, then finally, you will see an indicator here, very bullish. As you know, um, people are highly confident and optimistic about this stock. So it is very bullish a dark green. It could be bullish or it could be bearish or very bearish as well. There are like four or five uh, different indicators. Neutral is another in indicator. So there are four or five indicators to reflect how people feel, market feel at large about this stock. Okay. So some more information, some charts, the price performance on weekly basis, on one monthly basis, you can see in three months, it has gone up by 30.31%, so on and forth, some data about the price fluctuation is also given on yeah. different but values. but nidish when 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 i when you just when you just showed us the the graph and when mm. the you know in march it went down to 300 i mean you know it feels like a complete missed opportunity <laughs> at this stage yeah. when you look back at it because these kind of events doesn't happen every day no. right so if if you are someone in the market or if someone who understands clearly would have identified the opportunity. Uh, you know, so it is just phenomenal because this is uh, less than six, you know, this is about six months down the line and it has gone up 300%. So it is such a missed opportunity and it's such a shame. But yeah. this is why we we are sharing this so people can make use of these opportunities without advising, of course, because there's always a risk factor. But it, looking at that, it seems like such a missed opportunity and it's such a shame. Yeah, it, it is um, kind of uh, um, maybe for those who know and have experience, uh, th this is this was one of the golden era for many investors. Um, Indeed, basically. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. So from two, actually look at here further down, 248. And I bet you, if you look at the, you can pick any random company. Uh, you know that is let's say the the, the uh, you know that that sensex basis it's average on right mm -hmm. and i'm sure you'll find a similar trend on all those 30 companies <clears throat> that are the most traded companies which is what sensex is made up of mm -hmm. the 30 companies and i'm sure you'll find a similar trend in all those companies yeah many, so many you, large caps. yeah and many large caps, bank yeah. bank it especially those who were the high high performer also um, slid down in the same proportion. So even this one, 20, 20th March, it was like uh, 237. Um, oh my God. Uh, in fact, even further down, oops, oops, see? So it is actually even going further down. And as opposed to the, that, on 1st of August, if you look at, it is at a, very, very high peak. And, 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 it, and this does not mean, uh, Nidish, right, that the book that value uh, mm -hmm. has uh, come, uh, the book value is still hold its value, right? It is, so, it, it is still holds its value. Yeah, so the, so the assets are still there. So it's not like anything has changed apart from the market sentiment. Abs absolutely. Because the see here, price book value 2.31, right? It is currently. Currently, right. it is a uh, 2.3 times. If I divide this price 1,065 by 2.3, right? Um, right. Uh, I don't know how, how much it is exactly, but that would be come. That would be around. Um, that would be around uh, 
400 okay yeah that would be around 400 so that means your book value is around 400 so it should be somewhere like like uh, here right you know so so that means the stock had gone down even below the book value at that point of yeah time. and that's so even value, value hmm. it was still way less right than the book right. value as then you say let's I mean, that is just, uh, that is such an indicator straight away. Yeah. So th these are the era of um, like uh, taking the informed decision, do uh, the analytics, or at least uh, try to watch how the market behaves before you start doing any trading, because you you can take some time to learn how things are working, whether you are understanding this or not. Uh, so you can just start doing some research and analysis on regular basis in order to understand the market. And these are the, some of the tools that can be utilized. I mean, I, I can share my, I mean, I, I, I have a few friends who are in the process of buying a house, Nidish. Yeah. When, um, when uh, this crash was, they, when this happened in March and they made sure that they didn't buy a house and they can't, they, they put that deal on pause to ensure that they make use of these opportunities. But these are obviously people who recognize there was a clear opportunity. Yeah. Um, and I remember talking to them and they said they had the house, they had everything sorted and they said, I'm not going to do it because they clearly said that this is once in a lifetime opportunity that we might never see again. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I mean, um, if you look at the average performance of the Sensex, it it hasn't gone up that fast in the history. So just in 10 months, it has become 2x. Just in 11 yeah. months, maybe. I mean, uh, of course, no, at the months. time, at the time, we didn't know how long it was going to last. Exactly. One thing was very clear that the, the era that we are in right now, it was not going to, it, it's inevitable that you know, with the, the science and the technology, et cetera, available to us. It was just a matter of time. But obviously yeah. the market, the fears, you know, the market sentiment and the fear kicks in. And I guess that's where uh, all these um, clever investors make use of the opportunity because they know the value is still there, even if you purely go by the book cost. Of course, we are yeah. not advising anything, but this is just a personal opinion. Right. And, and uh, on, on the downside, on the contrary, though it seems sometimes very lucrative but uh, other school of thought also say that don't try to catch the falling knife so what it means in yeah. simpler term is that when the stock is also falling and that's why many people uh, I, I also talked to they were saying that you know what um, it will so sensex as opposed to right now 51 52 at that one point of time was touching 25k right um right. And it was very, very low, even from the uh, scale of that time. So it had crashed from 42 to almost 25, 26K. And when I talked talk to a couple of people, they said that, you know, uh, it is going to go for the down. It could be 15,000. And I was saying that, but there is no end to this uh, thought. It can go down. Of course, it can become zero as well. But at least people can make some uh, informed decision and do some research to find Indeed. out whether it is uh, a particular given stock is still a right one. Um, maybe something which has a strong fundamental. And that's where we think that fundamental should be studied. So if the fundamental is good, financial statement is good. If the market is good, if the regulation is good, then uh, yeah. there's a good chance it can recover. Of course, no one knows the future. Um, right. So people are saying, no, no, it is quite a scary time. And I understand why, because this is called don't try to catch the falling knife because it can further go down and it can hurt you. But on the same time, that's where it is in, important that people start to understand at least where to look at, what to look at, and um, then start yeah, watching the market. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. What but it, because purpose. it's very hard to judge what the what the rock bottom is going to be. Exactly. So, so sometimes you could be waiting for, for that moment. So as you say, when you look at all the other um, ratios and other data it will give you a better indication because it, you're never going to be able to time it absolutely right uh, so you just have to make a judgment as to is the value still there in case the trend continues you still know that you know the data suggests that the value is still there and it's just a matter of time and that's where the the assurance can kick in absolutely so uh, that was about the 
website um, for the market. Now we can look at the another one, which provides the news. So it is not about the market, but we are going to look at the another website. It will be good for the news as to what is happening with the different company, which company is in the news for good and bad both reasons. So let's say I have um, mentioned this in the in the PPT earlier, the economic times market. So this is an electronic paper. Here we can look into some of the news, which is trending. Market dashboard, Pyramid Enterprise Limited shares fall by this. Uh, Bank of India, see, it went up. And why it went up? Bank of India, Central Bank of India, um, Bank of Maharashtra. So there are three, four banks, which stock went up by, I believe, 40%. Uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, 50, 60% in three days. Okay. Yes. So it went up by 50 to 60% in three days. And there are four go um, PSU government banks. Why it happened? And this is where the uh, top down or bottom up approach comes in picture because the government declared that they are considering the privatization of two out of these four banks. Okay. <clears throat> of course, these banks were. Kind of going down for some time and they were not well managed uh, the conference conference of investors was uh, eroding from these banks government is considering to privatize them at least two out of these four banks as soon as the news came to market market performed 60 percent above the prevailing price 60 percent within three days it's a massive gain of course then a uh, couple of percent five ten percent it went down as well but of course it was a massive rally this is where now I will say the top down approach also comes in picture. So let's go back to our slide. <coughs> so when I'm talking about the website to read that, that was one of the sample. Um, here, website to read the financial news, ET market, live main, Bloomberg, you can look into those websites on a regular basis to understand what is happening in the market and what is likely to come as well. Because the next we are going to talk about is top-down analysis. So if the government makes any decisions, it's also called typically pestel analysis, political, economical, sociocultural, technological, environmental, and legal. So when anything happens in the society, in the culture, in the political arena, in the legal arena, in the cultural shift, any news comes in the market, you know, uh, global war, geopolitics, anything. Somewhere, it gives a message to the entire market. It kind of uh, sends, a tecto, uh, it sends a seismic wave, like an earthquake wave. It starts from one place and it goes round and round the entire um, region and it tries to shake the tectonic plates in the entire region. This, how, this is how the earthquake comes. It's called seismic waves. In the same way, market also work. When there's a news that, okay, this country is going to attack on another country or some uh, great political leader was shot or when the um, uh, oil producing companies are going to increase the oil price or there is some trade war between two large countries, right? This kind of news gives a signal, seismic signal to the market and market start to react. So first thing happens, the sector, the industry start to react. Maybe banking sector or the airline sector, they start to get scared and fiery. Uh, they become very um, anxious, pessimistic. And once the yeah. industry start to react, then the company, the stock, will also feel yeah. the pressure. Yeah. No, that's right, Nidish. Uh, it's a really good point because all countries, like before, uh, even when I talked about the, the market, <clears throat> crash that happened in 1929, the very famous uh, stock market crash, the Black Thursday. Sim it's purely because even though it happened in America, uh, all countries suffered because all countries were interconnected by trade and commerce, which led which led to global depression. So, so it's absolutely uh, important to to understand that you know this, these things has a, a an impact overall, uh, and it has a ripple effect. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So those those signals actually penetrates through the sectors. Of course, it goes through the entire economy, maybe India as a country or the Asia as a subcontinent. 
and it goes to the sectors like maybe banking, IT sector, or the airlines industry. And after that, it hits the particular stock that we are considering. If suppose that uh, in March 2020, the pandemic struck, people were nervous, investment were withdrawn, the bank, uh, the, the business were shutting down, then of course the bank will be the first to get impacted. So you can see what happened to index in the bank. The stock, which used to be some uh, one day beyond 2000, came down to 420, 400. So that is a seismic wave that we felt. And it could not only happen for the political or some legal reasons, it could be because of sociocultural shift, the change in the culture, change in the taste of the people. Some could be short term, some could be long term as well. And uh, it, whatever happens in the society, in the economy, in the political arena, it strikes down to Absolutely. the sector. I mean, we can also look at uh, GameStop here. I mean, the, the you know, when you're looking at top down approach or bottom up approach, you know, uh, same thing happened because uh, the market was uh, very much aware that there was a big short sell um, happening in the market because you can you can see the 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 trade that was placed. It's in the public domain. This is not insider information. So so when the market becomes aware that there's a big sell trade happening, uh, and then of course the the market uh, uh, in the especially in the social media world, the uh, I don't know what what is it called the Reddit army or whatever it is yeah. um, took yeah. action uh, so again the, the same kind of thing and then it had an impact of course it had an impact on that stock mm -hmm. but the point is you know it is uh, the it, it, the rally it rallied like never before and this was nowhere linked to the fact that the, the book value was uh, was nowhere near that if anything they were trying to shut down the, the branches uh, and they were trying to wind down certain physical branches to reduce their costs. Uh, absolutely. And to make it worse, when such news comes, be it positive or negative, just imagine the contribution of the emotions and excitement and anxiety, right? Because absolutely, we think that human are rational being. We are not. We are, we are our emotional being under the garb of the rationality. So when Tentacle sell, sells the stock, no matter how much well I understand about the stock and if I have the confidence in the stock, I'm bound to sell it. It's just a reaction, right? And that reaction, when it becomes kind of a, uh, gets a snowball effect, entire market start to sell the stock. Mm -hmm. And this is how things goes out of control. control. And then uh, economic theory and financial theory or mathematics do not really work. It is all the anxiety and the emotional side of the people who start to drive the market and that's where uh, and that's yeah. why we have been repeatedly saying that okay no matter how much analysis we do we are still subject to the risk because the numbers and the number crunching the models and the uh, integration calculus algebra and all those things do are not really considered when people get uh, too excited or too nervous about the market yeah i think i mean correct me if i'm wrong Nidish, but india also has uh, indian stock markets also has a uh, upper circuit so, uh, yeah. so yeah, uh, which I don't know, is it 20%? Yeah, yeah it is uh, uh, around 15-20% uh, they 15, the decide, yeah, and the, the block on the, for the trading. And yeah. it has happened for the banks recently. Banks right, stocks. right. So, so, you know, and I'm sure the same applies for uh, the lower circuit as well. Correct. Yeah. So, so the, so we, I think, Indian which which is not present in the in the US market um, New York Stock Exchange doesn't have that upper circuit uh, and the the lower circuit which is what uh, which is why game stock went crazy but that wouldn't typically have happened in the Indian market because it's more much more sort of um, say again regulated yeah 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 so so that can be a little bit of a uh, i guess uh, a saving grace for uh, for people who wants to get involved in the in Indian stock market. Absolutely, yes. Uh, so that is the top-down approach and analysis. Now, the bottom up, the opposite to that is, when we look at the company's financial position, profitability and the cash flow, all the ratio that we have talked about, PE, price, book value, etc., and we think that, oh, it, it looks quite good, or maybe even bad, then we also need to understand how the entire sector is performing or maybe entire um, the industry, the market, the economy overall. 
what kind of policy government is considering contemplating to make? If I take the example of the banking stock again, if a government of PSU sector is not doing well, and um, if I read in the Economic Times that government is considering to privatize some of the banks, then it, it could be a good news. And accordingly, I can kind of uh, um, uh, not to, uh, decide not to sell that stock which I have been holding. Basically. So that that analysis also helps to look at the particular stock that I might hold and then what is happening in the industry and at the national level or economic level, then we can decide what to do with that stock. So when we look at the information at the economic level, what kind of information we can look at? Of course, I'm not, uh, I cannot give the complete exclusive list of everything that can make the difference. But when it comes to say economic indicators, we can look at industry, uh, the interest rate, inflation rate, the growth in the GDP, what International Monetary Fund is talking about, World Bank is saying, what government is planning, how much government is going to invest, what the banks are talking about, what is the uh, mood of RBI, you know, uh, what is the KPI, key performance indicator, or the inflation rate, of course. So all this, yeah. we need to analyze, which um, is going to impact the stocks. Yeah, I mean, Nidish, just one more thing. Um, it's more, I think, the, the, the general... Uh, Generally, they say, and again, again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but generally they say when, when something, when a stock or a company is in the news, yeah, that's, that, might, that, that might potentially mean that you've already missed the opportunity, right? And I guess this is where, uh, because then everyone, uh, you know, this is when everyone is going to jump on the board. And this is where I think it's important to be able to analyze the data, look at the different ratios. So, so before everyone else jumps on the bandwagon, that you are able to analyze your own stock. Of course, the, the risk is always there, as we have pointed out. But generally, the saying goes that, you know, by the time something is talked about, by the time something gets on the news, it might not be the right time to jump on board either. But I don't know how much truth there is to that. Yeah, it, it, it could be true in many, many cases, uh, indeed. But sometimes market is also, some news are so big and pervasive that it gives us ample time to react as well. Um, if I right. take the example of the bank acquisition and the privatization right now, which is in the news. Um, right. Again, uh, the rally continued for three straight days. I see. Yeah, so yeah you that's see, true. You read the news at 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, you still have time to execute or buy in, buy those stock by 11th and 12th, uh, 11 or 12 p.m. Uh, right. Sorry, a.m. and p.m. the same day in next two hours. Yeah. And maybe you bought the stock at, uh, it was trading at 100. You bought it maybe after some uh, news, you bought it 105. But the stock has a potential to go up to 160. Right. So you're buying at 105 after reading the news. Still, there's ample opportunities to make uh, uh, to gain. yeah, be exactly because not everyone can be you know a futuristic thinkers. Hmm. Yeah, and not everyone can be like hmm. Warren Buffett or Elon Musk or whoever, right? And this is where you know we have to rely on on, on information, public information that comes on. Um, and I think, uh, as you say, the you know depending on the news, it can still rally for many hmm. days or weeks on after that um so it's not that it's too late so it, it just depends i guess is what you're saying yeah and uh, it is always worthwhile to watch this kind of key news in the market and uh, be ready to also make your decisions basically based on all the overall situation so anyone who is new maybe you you might not start trading straight away uh, but for some time maybe for a couple of weeks the months you can just start watching the market and understand the news, how the macroeconomic things work, how, what is the top-down or bottom-up approach. You can spend a couple of months just learning the market before you start jumping into making the trading. Um, you know That could be another way to just educate yourself first uh, so that you can take the decisions, uh, which is much more balanced. Uh, and basically, uh, then there are two types of security analysis. As we said earlier, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Of course, we, we, uh, it's a very, very big area. It's like a, uh, hundreds and hours of the training can be given on those two topics itself. Uh, but just to give you a very high level understanding of what these two are. So fundamental analysis is when we look at the uh, factors that we discussed earlier, like um, economic conditions, 
market investment horizons what government what kind of policy government is going to make and um, where overall economy is going what is the trend of the consumerism uh, or where the uh, technology is moving to all these kind of uh, approaches are called fundamental analysis when we look at this information and analyze the market um, on the other hand the technical analysis is when we look at the li the liquidity of the stock if i jump again on the money control website or redif money website you will see that there are certain liquidity means like a trading volume of that stock or you can look at the graph of that stock we have looked it into the graph right for one week one month three months six months so on and forth so you can look at the different graph there is a candlestick analysis there are various linear graph there is a histogram all those kind of graph when you look at and you try to understand that Uh, graphical approach and how things are going up or down uh, versus how industry is performing and uh, then you can also derive some very valuable insights those data relating to that particular stock of the company volumes the trading patterns ups or down in a particular day the range on in a particular day all this kind of stats that comes from with regard to the particular stock of the company that is called technical analysis because you are looking at the technicality of the stock movement of that particular stock but when you are looking at the overall economy sector the government policy and the trend of the market the consumer confidence the economy etc that is called fundamental analysis so there are two types of analysis also done when you look at a particular stock so a couple of things to take away from today some website are there to provide you the news on the economy and the market then there are website to give you the uh, trading volume price earning price book value data with relation to that stock right you can use this type of website and the information to do top down versus bottom up approach and that that can be part of the fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis now then there are two ways to also check the information one cap is when you look at the overall information first fundamental ana analysis and then if you want to just restrict yourself to the nitty gritty and the details maybe or the financial statement of that uh, company then it becomes the technical analysis so these are the difference between the two mehar anything you want to add Oh, I guess just more of a question. So, in other mm -hmm. words, when you're looking at the data and when you're looking at the the numbers and the ratios, that's your technical analysis. And when you're making decisions based on the news, the top-down approach, that's fundamental analysis. Uh, yeah, that can be quite correct. Okay. So, some of the some I I also. uh can continuously read some of the um bestseller books and the uh, renowned in investors like benjamin uh, graham and the dodd intelligent investor by uh, graham these are some of the very famous books in this area um they they are experts in the fundamental analysis they have uh, vast experience uh they also made, made some very um intuitional um and uh, metaphorical comments about the market that market is uh, like a mr perfect or mr market they actually don't care about most of our in, uh, um, analysis and how we interpret the data mr market also takes into account the behavior and the emotional side of the people as well okay so when we do the trading we need to be aware of what is the mood of the mr market and how he behaves so they always do not act or react on the basis of certain ratios and numbers they go in a pattern okay so these are some of the uh, very uh, storytelling comment by ben graham you know uh, with regard to mr market so a couple of tips and uh, advices maybe i can just uh, quickly summarize here that we need to look at a uh, few things of course There, there can not be in um, kind of exclusive list of all the useful information to make the decision. But some of the things that um, experts suggest, uh, especially like Graham, uh, that we need to look at the adequate size, the volume. 
of the investment in the market how much stocks are being traded what is the liquidity of the stock uh, what is the financial condition like i, I uh, mentioned earlier the overall debt or maybe asset of the company is earning stable maybe the uh, profitability is not very stable it is volatile it keeps going up and down that means uh, it is a very risky stock what is the dividend record is dividend distribution stable important to look at when uh, somebody wants to get regular income from the stock what is the earning growth because if earning is not growing overall no matter what happens to the company no matter how much investment is made company is not a great stock earning has to go grow that's why someone invest because earning will either give you the dividend or it will give you the capital appreciation in the future so earning growth is important what is the price earning ratio it should not be too low and should not be too high as well if it is too low means people don't have the confidence if it is too high means it is a bubble so price earning ratio should be moderate and we we need to check with uh, market average as well or industry average as well similarly price to asset it's like a price book value or price to asset that should also be moderate a moderate ratio is much better than extremely low or high either way so we need, we need to look into the net asset which is nca understand the data source what data you are looking at who is providing the data is that public data or coming from the company or uh, from from a particular broker what is the earning per share earning is important and hence earning per share is also important but ma market price because this is how you calculate price earning so market price divided by earning per share is price earning ratio book value per share we have talked about dividend per share we have talked about current ratio is your current asset by current liability so you need to know how much asset has been generated for the given amount of liability of the company that will come from the balance sheet and financial statements are publicly available for all this company that you intend to invest maybe so it is always better to know more than less okay what is the total debt what is the total equity what is the expected growth so these are some of the uh, numbers and the ratios one should bear in mind uh, to get acquainted even if you are not intending to make an investment if you just want to understand how the company is doing these are some of the good numbers to know understand investigate and keep the eye on uh, because of course those who are fully informed they also make the loss they also lose the money but if somebody is not informed then you can understand what kind of risk can come and that's why we just thought of sharing some of the uh, numbers and accounting and financial data and where we get it from um, of course you can make the decision based on your own preference and the choices any question before we end the session uh, thank you so much nidesh and nihar i mean it was uh, very informative and you know uh, though these were these are the terms that we might have you know uh, we were acquainted at some point of time during our you know term time in college or uh, you know in our mbas but it was a very good refresher and and uh, you know uh, looking forward to such sessions in the future also thanks uh, nidesh and thanks nihar again for taking time out and educating us thanks abhishek um, of course uh, yeah it's a pleasure and uh, we'll continue to you know uh, kind of hold the session on different topics and time to time just just for education and um, academic awareness purpose uh, apart from the stock uh, and the market we have varieties of other uh, session also time to time uh, organized and delivered by uh, us from finsep institute next week you can also uh, join us uh, whereby we are going to have a session on the cryptocurrencies as well so thanks for your feedback and inputs abhishek and uh, your time as well much appreciated you and uh, nihar um for time and participation and uh, talking together so we'll see you all again in the next session yeah thank you nidesh uh, it was very insightful so yeah look forward to the cryptocurrency session i think i hope uh, uh, rajiv and avishek uh, i would encourage you both to join because that will be another very exciting session and we have a, a larger panelist as well uh, of speakers so um, if you do have the time please do uh, attend excellent thank you so much and thank you see you all later take Bye. care bye bye